here we are with an e-bike that has a pretty clean installation of a torque sensing bottom bracket. And we're going to show in this video how to configure the version 3.1 cycle analyst firmware for a proportional torque control once you have a torque sensor installed. So as we're setting up any path device or anything in the cycle analyst, we first get ourselves in the setup menu. And now we're going to navigate to the path device. So this, again, shows a preview screen of what the cycle analyst sees for the pedal sensor signals. You want to be able to see that when you rotate the cranks, you can see both the P and the D arrows are toggling up and down. And then this here is a preview of the voltage that is present on the torque sensor. So the centered torque sensor is resting at 1.5 volts when there's no force in the cranks. And then when I start pedaling, you'll be able to see that voltage number increasing. This confirms that the hardware is installed okay. If you see zero volts or five volts on here, you know you have a break in the wiring for the torque signal. And if these guys don't toggle, then there's also a problem in your wiring. No point going further in the setup until you fix that. So in the 3.1 firmware, we've made it super easy for configuring these by having a number of preset torque sensors built in. So when we choose our sensor type on this bike, we have a Sempu bottom bracket. So we simply choose the Sempu bottom bracket from the selection list, and that preloads all the other values relevant to the configuration of the Sempu sensor. So now if we scroll through, it's preloaded us for 24 poles. So there's a 24 pulse cadence sensor built into it. It's a two wire uh, type of signal sensing. Um, it has a directional polarity set up correctly for us. And it often pre also preloads an appropriate torque scale. Now the Sempu sensor is not an especially accurate measure of human torque. This is an approximate figure that will give a reasonable readout for your human power. But if it's showing you producing more watts than you know you are or less watts than you know you are with your legs, you can adjust that by scaling this number up or down a little bit. Default of 50 works pretty good. So that's all you have to do for setting up the pass device. You simply choose the sensor you have. And now you can see on the preview screen, it shows the Newton meters that it's available. I'm not putting any force on the crank, so that's zero Newton meters. Now the next thing you wanna do is set up how the cyclonus is configured to respond to this torque sensor. So instead of no assistance, with no assistance, we would be able to see our human watts and our RPM, but we get no automatic power from the bike. We're gonna set this up in the most common system that you do with the torque sensor into torque mode. So pass mode of torque will give us proportional torque control of the e-bike. All right. Um, this start level here is the minimum amount of human power that you need before the automatic power assistance kicks in. So a default value of 62 human watts is pretty reasonable. It means when you're pedaling really lightly, you're not gonna have the motor engaging. But if you put any kind of force in the pedals, you'll be over 60 watts and you'll have power coming out of the motor. If you don't want the pedal assist to kick in unless you're really cranking on the cranks, then you should increase this maybe to like 150 or even 200 watts. That gives you a nice amount of control over just when the motor kicks in. So it's not necessarily on all the time. So we'll leave that at the default of 62. Actually, we'll make that even a bit lower. So we might want a setup that'll give assistance even at really modest, modest pedal forces. So I'll set that down to 25 watts, for instance. You could go right down to zero watts, but then if you just spin the cranks with no force on the pedals at all, you'll still get a little bit of power. Here's where we choose the scale factor. And this is the maximum scale factor that the bike will provide you multiplying your human power, your human power by electrical power. So two watts per human watt isn't bad, but it's actually not as much as you'd want when you're riding in a place with lots of hills. Typically going up a hill, you wanna have five to 800 watts of power from a motor, but you only are putting out maybe 200 to 250 watts from your legs. So a peak value closer to three or four watts per human watts is usually desired. I'm gonna set this up to four watts per human watt. So now, and these guys we can just leave happy at their defaults, and that's it. So now we have a cycle analyst set up for automatic torque control that's gonna multiply my pedal force by a factor of four. Now, most of the time when you're riding in a pass-assisted bike, you wanna be able to adjust the level of assistance that you're getting. Typical commercial e-bikes might have two, three, or four modes of assist level. The cycle analyst lets you set that to however many number of modes that you want. But the key to doing that is having an auxiliary input device. So this is a really clean, minimal install bike, and we have the DigiOx buttons you see on the left here available for increasing or decreasing our assist level. So we would go to our digital lock setup menu and select that we have a two button control so that has both up and down buttons. And the function for this control, we're gonna set that to our pass level. So in basic pass mode, when you set it to pass level, these buttons control how many watts of power you're getting when you're pedaling. When you're in a torque pass mode, the pass level controls that multiplier factor. So now I, by choosing pass level here, I'm able to vary from zero to four watts per human watts my scaling. 
So typically you'd leave that to be at the last power on. Um, this is how many steps we get in our adjustment level. Instead of having just you know three levels of assistance, it's kind of nice to fine tune that a little bit. Here we've got it set for nine steps and nine steps going from zero to four watts or zero to four multiplier means that we have multipliers of a half. So we can have zero, half, one, one and a half, all the way up to four times our assistance. Um, and so now you can see in the preview here, the nine different modes available. And if we escape back to our main display, now when I push the button, we can see what our current scale factor is in this top right. I can go from zero up to four times uh, assistance from the motor. So now I'm gonna go for a spin and illustrate just how this works. Here I am, and I pedal, and look at that. Nice boost, if I pedal lightly, we see here, you know, 200 watts coming out of the motor, 150 watts of the motor, we start pedaling hard. One thing that's super useful to know about for any kind of troubleshooting or verifying how things are working is the third display screen on the cycle analyst, this one here. It shows you the human watts and the human pedal cadence that is currently being seen by the CA device. So if you're having issues feeling that the torque sensor is not responding right or not working at all, first thing to do is look at this screen and see if the CA is seeing an RPM value and a reasonable number for your human power. So on this bike here, you'll notice as I pedal, now I'm turning the cranks, that's my pedal RPM, and that's the power. It seems about right, so 50, 60 watts when I pedal really lightly. And if I start to push harder, you see that increase in 180, 200 watts an hour. 